So who's ready to button up this project and move on to something else? This guy. So here's what we're going to do. First thing, we're going to wipe off all this old gel coat swatches that were on here from when we did our color matching. Then we're going to mix up our color match gel, lay that down after it cures. Then we're going to wet sand it and then buff it, and then we're done. Great. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Nah, I was just kidding. I wouldn't do that to you guys. I, I didn't tell you anything. So, but that is kind of, kind of, sort of, generally what we're going to end up doing anyways. But uh, in a little bit more detail. <laughs> so, uh, but first step, like I said, number one is to get all of these old color swatches wiped off. Now, since none of these swatches were ever catalyzed. It's just dried gel coat, so they just wipe right off with acetone. So that's going to be step number one. This gel coat's been on here for a little while. Oops. <laughs> now, if you remember when we did all of our sanding, you know, knocking our glass down and everything, we were using, I think it was 60, well, that, yeah, it looks like 60 grit. Very, very aggressive paper. Now, because of that, you know, because it was 60 grit, all, the, all our scratches that are in here, they're, they're fairly deep. So when we're laying in our gel coat, those scratches are actually deep enough where the gel coat is going to kind of fill in a little bit. And keep that, keep that idea in mind. Because what we're going to be doing next to really try and, and feather out this color change is we're going to sand a larger area around the perimeter of this repair with a finer grit paper. So then what's going to happen is that in through the middle here where it's, you know, the gel coat's going to be thickest, that's, you know, that is what it is. But as we get out towards the edges, that's where we want our, our color to kind of, you know, shade out and, and feather into the surrounding area. So starting here where it's going to be thick, we're going to get out into here where it's still the 60 grit, you know, sanding marks. And then as we get out into here, it's going to get, the gel coat that we're going to lay up is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner because it's going to be having to fill a finer sanding grit around, around the, uh, the area here. And when gel coat gets thin, when it gets thin enough, it actually becomes okay, somewhat translucent or opaque. And that's really what allows us to kind of shade into uh, the surrounding area and you know, blend it in and make it disappear, more or less. So that's, uh, that's going to be our, our next step. We're going to take, I think this is 180 grit. You could use 120 grit or 150, whatever. I wouldn't go any finer than 180. This is actually a little finer than what I would normally use, but we'll just give it a good sanding. <laughs> so right now, this, the 60 grit is extending about an inch outside this, uh, this repair area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extend this out probably another two inches. Inch and a, you know, one to two inches all the way around. And it doesn't matter how you sand it. It really doesn't. Just as long as you scuff it up uniformly. That looks good. Uh, as long as it's uniformly dull. You don't want to see any, any glossy or shiny spots where we just sanded. If there's still a little glossy spot or, you know, any kind of shiny patches, you gotta keep sanding. <laughs> All right, now that we've gotten this area or this, you know, this uh, panel sanded, cleaned, prepped, and it's ready to go, now it's time to start thinking about how we're gonna apply our gel coat. And really, you've got two, you know, kind of two different options. You can either brush it, you know, brush it on, or you can spray it. Uh, just real briefly, I'm gonna go over the advantages and disadvantages of each. Um, we'll start with spraying. You know, when you spray, yeah, the advantages are it goes faster. You get a, you know, a smoother surface when you spray it, so you're get your, you know, when it's all said and done, you're going to have less wet sanding to do, but you're spraying it. So now you're also dealing with overspray, you know, which means that you've got to have the surrounding areas, uh, you know, from what you're, uh, you're going to be gel coating, you've got to have that entire sur you know, surrounding area covered in plastic, uh, taped down, you know, protected. Also, if you're doing this outside, which, you know, a lot of people do, uh, you know, now you've got to look, you know, think about, you know, where's that overspray going to go? Is it going to go on your neighbor's boat? And <laughs> I'll tell you, if it does, 
that is a difficult conversation to have the uh, you know the following weekend. Uh, also, you know, since you're spraying, you got to have a large compressor, and I don't mean these little pancake jobs. They're kind of useless for when you're spraying something. They're good for working around the house, you know, driving a nail gun, that kind of thing. But for spraying, useless. Um, cleanup. You know, there's a lot. You, you not only have to, you know, break down all, you know, pull all the plastic that you had to hang. You also got to worry about cleaning your gun before it sets, before the gel coat sets up in there. Um, trying to think, you know, anything else? It's just, it's a lot more prep, you know, both before and after you've, uh, you've done your spraying. Now, if you're, like I said, if you're doing a large area, it's not so much of an issue, but for doing a small part like this, it just doesn't make sense. What I'm, what I'm going to do, and what I actually prefer to do for all of those reasons that I just mentioned, is when it's possible, I prefer to just brush it on. Yeah, you know, you, it's gonna, there's gonna be more sanding involved, wet sanding after the fact to get it, you know, smoothed out and, and looking good. But there's no, there's no prep, there's very little prep work, really, other than what we just did. This is the extent of the prep, you know, sanding it and wiping it down. There's no plastic, there's no uh, uh, equipment that you have to move around, haul around, you know, nothing you have to worry about breaking down and cleaning before it all sets up. It's just, it's got a lot going for it. Now, if you want to know more about the spraying, you know, as far as different types of guns, different thinners, and, and all that other fun stuff, if you want to know more about, you know, that aspect of how to apply the gel coat, go to my website. I'm going to have a huge, and this is going to be a, a big write-up, more, more of an article, uh, you know, kind of going on the, the nuts and bolts of spraying gel coat. So if that's really what you're interested in, go to the website, borixtoday.com. Since we're going to be brushing this on, I just want to go over a few basics on gel coat. This is like nuts and bolts gel coat 101 stuff. First off, the temperature that you're working in. It has to be at least 65 degrees. You got to make sure that your gel coat is fresh. And, you know, fresh, in my opinion, is it's got to, that gel coat had to have been made within that year. <laughs> gel coat that's more than a year old, it's kind of a crap shot on if it's going to actually cure or not. And it, materials in general need to be fresh. If any aspect of, the, uh, of what you're mixing together is old, the whole thing is pooched. It's not going to work. Uh, depending on how you're applying your gel coat, if you're spraying it, any you know, different additives that you're putting in, that determines how much catalyst you have to add. Now for here, since we're going to be brushing it, no additional additives are going to be mixed in with it. Well, I'm going to catalyze this at around 1%, between 1% to 1.5%. Additives, you know, like the Duratec, when you add that in, it'll say you need to add, you need to catalyze it at two, two and a quarter percent, something like that. But generally, uh, again, my old general rule of thumb is 10 to 12 drops of mech per ounce of gel coat. What, as long as you're not add, you know, using any additives, just regular old plain Jane gel coat, 10 to 12 drops of mech per ounce, and you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. Now, as far as the the type of gel coat that I use. Um, I just had somebody ask me this today. I, I always use a laminating gel coat. I don't ever buy the, la the gel coat that already has the wax mixed into it, just because it's, it's, just, it's a pain to work with, to be honest. And all the gel coat that you see available in like your automotive stores, don't buy that. It's junk. You won't be happy with it, and it already has the wax mixed into it, more than likely. Uh, when I first started doing this, I started out using the wax, you know, gel coat with the wax into it, and it is just frustrating as hell when you just you can't laminate it. You know, you've got one shot to lay up your total thickness, and you know, you've got if you want to lay up anything more, you got to wait for it to cure, sand it down, and then you can lay up some more. But now you're wasting time. So I buy laminating resin from a composite retailer, and I'll have a list of uh, you know, different retailers that I've, that I've used or that I know that others have used that sell a good quality product. I don't want to talk too much, but there's just so much detail, uh, specifics that need to be covered in here. Uh, otherwise, what I end up doing is I, I spend the time making these videos, and if I don't go into, into the detail with everything, I end up leaving people with more questions than answers, and then I've got emails up the wazoo to reply to. All right, so let's get this stuff mixed up. Let's get our gel coat down, because that's, that's really why you're here. 
anytime your gel coat's been sitting for a while, you know, days or even hours, anytime, I don't really care. Stir it up, give it a, give it a good mix. You wanna make sure that everything is well incorporated. Four ounces it is. I, mean, I, was, I, still, I still have plenty left, which is, you know, what you wanna have. You don't ever wanna, <laughs> don't ever wanna run out halfway through the repair. And then wipe off the edge, otherwise, you know, when you set it down, you're gonna have little drips coming down off the, uh, off the cup, whether they're gonna fall on, you know, the, the, the boat, you know, if, if you're you know, setting this down on the boat or on the dock or the grass or your car, <laughs> hopefully not your car. But anyways, wipe the, wipe the edges off and then throw another piece of uh, either plastic or paper towel over it just to keep bugs and stuff. I don't know why, but bugs love this stuff. I mean, they will dive bomb this all day long. Go figure, I don't know. Next, take your brush. I'm just using a little two inch chip brush. And these things, you know, they're the cheap little ones. There's no point in using a nice brush for laying up gel coat because it's just gonna get trashed. So, you know, these are cheap disposable ones. You just use them and throw them away. But they, they do have a tendency to kind of have little hairs that kind of fall out. So, you know, work it around, move the bristles back and forth. You know, any, any loose ones that kind of pop their heads up, pluck them. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna set that aside. Now, I, I, pull, I mixed up four ounces. And I, uh, because I'm not using any additives you know, in this gel coat, I'm gonna catalyze this at about 1%, one to one and a quarter percent. Just because I wanna have some working time. And you know, it's, I, right now, it's about 70 degrees in here. So it's the perfect temp. So what that boils down to, well, 40 to 48 drops. <laughs> or if you've got one of these little dispenser deals like I'm gonna be using. I believe that's gonna come out to like one in a 1.25 cc's. On, the, on my webpage, you know, uh, under this video, I'm gonna include a link to a, uh, to a, a website that I, you know, one of my local vendors here, they, uh, that, that has a mixing chart. How much catalyst do you use for your gel coat depending on which additives, if any, you know, you're, you're mixing in with your base. All right. And here's my little mixer thing. I gotta hold it up. Yeah, that's pretty much right where it needs to be. All right, so cheers. Don't ever drink this stuff. <laughs> and make sure you're wearing rubber gloves too when you handle this stuff. Mech, mech is kind of nasty stuff. So we're gonna dump this in. And mix, mix, mix. It's gotta be mixed well. Whatever doesn't get mixed isn't gonna cure. And it's just a real it's a real disappointing day when you're laying up your material and say, you know, this half set up, but this half didn't. <laughs> Bad day. I've never had that happen. Just saying, I've seen other people that have done that and they, they, they were not very happy. They were not happy at all. So I'll sit here and stir this for at least a minute. Scraping the sides. Scraping the bottom, you know, and just get it all in there. Okay, now here's the trick. When you're brushing this on, especially on a surface that's more vertical, don't try and get all your gel coat laid up or don't try to get, you know, get it laid up so thick that you get complete coverage on your first coat. The trick here is, you know, laminating, you know, more or less. We're gonna brush on a coat in one direction. We're gonna let that sit and kind of flash off uh, for a few minutes. Then we're gonna come back with another coat in the opposite direction. Let that flash. Come back again across this way. Let that flash. Come back again this way. I would much rather, especially with brushing, because there's, there's gonna be some brush strokes that are left in here, and you know, that's kind of one of the downsides of brushing. So you gotta make sure that you've got enough material laid up so that it's thick enough so that you can sand those, any brush marks out and still be left with uh, you know, thick enough material where you're not getting any, any bleed through or print. Also, you know, and, this is what, and this was the trick, and if you didn't catch it, this was the trick. When you're laying this up, if you, if you always brush in the same direction, those little brush marks are gonna be deep. You know, they're gonna go all the way down to the, uh, the, the base here by alternating in this direction and then alternating back in this direction, you fill in those pits. So you just kinda, you build. 
so that you, know, you actually have less sanding to do to make those brush marks go away. First coat, you know, don't try and get it on, like I said, don't try and get it on thick. Too thick, I mean, start at the top, because you know, if it is too thick, then it can run down. It's better to start at the top and let it run than to start at the bottom and have it run down here. <laughs> at least if you do it up here, it's gonna run down to where you still need to coat, so. And right now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look to, uh, to cover the areas that are bare glass and that were sanded with the 80 grit paper or the 60 grit paper. And as far as the, you know, how much pressure I'm using on the brush here, not much. Not much at all, just enough to, to work it around. All right, so we're gonna let that kind of flash off for a few minutes. Okay, so the first time I went through, I, did, I went side to side. Now this time, I'm gonna go top to bottom. To start at the top and, take, and run your brush all the way down to the bottom. If you start, you know, kind of right in the middle of the patch, your brush is gonna push in to, that, to the wet gel coat and it's gonna leave you, a, you know, a, a pretty low spot, like I just did right here. So start at the top, pull it all the way down. Okay, now we're gonna let that flash off. Again, for a few more minutes. If you have a, uh, like a little heat gun or a hair dryer, that will really help to, to help this flash off. It's actually not a bad idea. Got Mr. Heat Gun. Now, I'm not gonna have this on hot. I mean, it's barely even gonna be warm. I'm not, the, the reason I'm grabbing or I'm using the heat gun isn't to add heat for this to cure faster. It's to get some airflow over the surface so that the solvents evaporate, you know, flash off, start to kinda stiffen up a little bit. So, I'm gonna basically turn this heat off. You know, I mean, it's just right now, it's just blowing air. And we'll go over it. Good times. Anyways, I mean, right now, just I, I don't really have any brush strokes in here, which is nice. That's kind of what you want to shoot for. If I, like I said, if I had made all my, if I had made both coats in the same direction, there would be brush strokes all the way down to the base. There would be no way that they would be sanded out. We would have to reapply our gel coat again, making more work. It's not what we want. Coat number three, and none of these are thick. I mean, they're, they're thick enough to, you know, to wet out the surface. They're not dry by any means. They're as thick as I can make them without having any runs, if that makes sense. And it's something that just takes a little bit of practice to, you know, to get a feel for, you know, what, what you can do. Okay, so that was top to bottom. Now we're gonna go side to side again. Now this last coat, or this last lamination I'm gonna do is gonna be up and down, and it's gonna extend out the farthest that I've gone yet. Now we're looking to make sure that all the fine grit that we just did at the beginning of the show is, is covered as well, because that's what's going to give us the, the shading tone into the surrounding panel. So, and this is gonna be brush, or, uh, Fairly heavy. And this is what I want to see. These ripples forming. All right, this looks pretty decent. Actually, pretty, uh, pretty smooth too. So, good, good, good. That's because of that trick I showed you, crisscross. Hmm? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna let this sit for probably, probably an hour, uh, give or take. Uh, you know, I wanted to tack up before I, you know, put my PVA on here. Because remember, polyester, without any additives or any wax in here, you gotta put a seal coat over top so it cures. So I'm gonna let it sit for about an hour, and then I'll come in and my the prevailer that I used last time kind of crapped out on me. So I'm gonna end up just kind of uh, putting some PVA on a paper towel and just kind of patting it in. <laughs> it works. It doesn't have to be pretty, it's just as long as it makes the skin, right? Yeah, 
And you see that technique? First I went side to side, now I'm going up and down. <laughs> this info is just gold. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna check out for tonight. I'm gonna let this cure. So have a good night and we will see you again soon. Well, tomorrow actually, in just a few hours. <laughs> This has been a Bootworks Today production.